Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Um, yes, open nebula in the wild. Why open nebula in the wild? Well, we have had a couple of opportunities already to explain what we are doing at Sarsara with uh, open nebula. We've been doing it already for a while. And uh, instead of coming this time again and saying, hey, this is what we have, well, we thought, yes, we are very happy with the cloud. Yes, it's very useful. But hey, it's a real cloud. It's in the real world. We have our own uh, pitfalls as well. And I think it's uh, nice also to have a look at where we've been and what we've had, because that may also uh, make bonds with others who've actually suffered something uh, similar to what we may have had so far. So maybe you find yourselves identified in some of the stories I'm going to tell you. Well, first of all, who we are. You've probably known us also by our previous names. We used to be Sara at some point. We became part of a larger family. We are based in the Netherlands, in Amsterdam, in particular in the Science Park. That's our boomerang building that we have now. And uh, we provide computing and data resources for scientists in the Netherlands, mainly. Now, from last year, I think, we've also uh, got a bit of a mandate to help um, pre the pre-competitive market. So it's not fair that we go and compete against uh, public companies, in, uh, sorry, uh, private companies with uh, subsidies. So we still have to help and try to find ourselves there, uh, help uh, innovative pre-competitive, uh, say, think, uh, startup, startup companies. So, well, that's where we are. Um, our other sisters from SURF, um, if you have further uh, questions, I can ask a bit later. But then, this is mainly what we do. We have an infrastructure as a service cloud, and we have to provide services on the HPC cloud to uh, scientists. Scientists are not necessarily system gurus, and they come with all these problems, and they say, hey, I still want to find out, well, say, my model. I need to compute my model on how does this work, how will this evolve, whatever. Lots of complexity. We didn't have the HPC cloud before 2009. Back in 2009, we started doing something and say, yes, let's see what we can do. Other infrastructures, you can hardly read anything. I think the PDF version that we will hang on the website will be more readable. In the, in the end, you know, there are six. They are categorized in different ways. And that's where the HPC cloud would fit. I don't think we need to go further. And this is what I'll be talking about. I actually started with the first one already. So we used to have large systems, but the user wasn't able to do everything that uh, she would like to. And uh, we thought, well, uh, a typical use case we get is somebody coming over, hey, I have this running on my laptop, it took ages to install, I don't want to install it anymore, but then my laptop is not big enough. Well, we offer this to users, we try and explain them, there are two options, you probably know all about this. Um, well, this is what we can offer in the cloud. So we started, like I said, back in 2009, or something like this, um, with Claudia. Uh, we borrowed some hardware somewhere. We had these, we had, well, modest uh, setup, and we got in touch with users. Users, would you be uh, willing to uh, give us feedback on a possible great service that we may be thinking about? Well, yeah, it worked. At that point, we were even thinking whether we should develop something or whether we should use, well, things like Open Nebula. Uh, apparently, somebody even got to install Open Nebula 1. Point something. And uh, well, it worked. Plenty of feedback we got. Self service was greatly appreciated. Hey, for the first time, users could actually run and install the software, become root. That's not something you can do on the supercomputer. So then the idea uh, became a reality. We bought our own hardware. We designed the HPC cloud service. Now, why HPC? Because we used to have big nodes. Up to 32 cores, we had 19 of those nodes at some point. Fast interconnect, 40 gigabytes per second between every virtual machine that was running somewhere else in the different nodes. And we had NFS storage at the time, shared one. It used to be good. We used to have uh, in our minds that scientists would like to come over to run MPI jobs. So, well, we had a very nice switch that allowed all of this. And, well, the cloud features were also good. They could uh, work with software that they couldn't run somewhere else. They could do their tryouts. If something wasn't working, they could just throw everything again and start from scratch. They could benefit from elasticity. Not that many of them were using it. And then we had to build a service on top of that. Well, yes, documentation. Somebody mentioned it. Yes, it's... If you're going to offer something 
uh, meant for sysadmins to people who are not sysadmins. They may need some extra uh, explanations. Well, you learn about these things. You give them lots of space. You can also do their own thing. Good part that we found at the moment, at that time, was that uh, if you give users who can run multiple VMs their own private network, they can also benefit from, well, building their own clusters. Say, build their own uh, SunGrid engine-based cluster, whatever. Yeah, that used to work. Uh, we are actually giving them the user interface. We were giving the user, face, the user interface back then. And uh, Open Nebula's groups mapped very well with projects. Now, projects. Projects are, well, groups of people who come together, research uh, projects. And um, they, we isolate their resources in, well, that project, the kind of project. That was great in Open Nebula 3. We used to have everything there. We didn't have to take that much. Well, you'll see a bit later about that. But then they could run big uh, VMs. They could run MPI jobs. They could have large disks, uh, fast network, and something we considered useful at the time, live migration. So we were very happy, but then it's real world. So once again, scientists are not sysadmins. Well, we had it there, but we keep realizing this every day. So documentation, as I, as I said, we have to write documentation. And another thing they always want to know is, does my thing, the thing that I want to do now, fit at the moment in the cloud well? we had to come up with a way to show where there was room available. Support, yes, we have uh, support mechanisms, so basically tickets and email, and well, we still may want to make sure that that works. <coughs> Accounting was important for us. Um, we are not sending bills for the moment. We were not sending bills back then anyway, but that's something we really needed, so we had to build something for that. Uh, at the time, we were looking at what Libvirt was delivering. We were running a daemon that would collect statistics. We would write everything there in the database. Uh, we were making graphs out of that. Well, we had to build something into it. Another thing that we started seeing is that many people saw the possibility for running their, well, showrooms or for running light services. Um, well, if I can run my VM, why shouldn't I install Apache, for instance, and show, well, I'm computing this, I want to show this, and then even, hey, I can share my data through that. Well, we thought at the time it would be nice to uh, leave the high-performance computing nodes available for high-performance computing, so we set up a, an extra set of nodes, we call them the light nodes. We could allocate uh, overcommit in specific uh, chunks, so you could overcommit twice or four times, and that was meant for interactive services. It used to work. Um, back then, we also had to tweak the user interface, among other things. Uh, the image upload plugin didn't work as well as we wanted, so we had to uh, find a different way. We'll see later when I talk about storage. They also need to download images. Well, that same storage uh, solution will come later. Network filters, that were very important at the time. Well, if we are providing access to the internet on VMs, VMs that we do not control because we are letting users do whatever they want on their VMs, well, we thought an external firewall would be a good option. So back then we came up with a solution of a network filter. Libvirt would diffuse to run a VM if there would be no uh, network filter. A network filter would have to be attached to a network at the time. On your template you would have to specify, I want these ports open or these ports closed. It was simple as that. And um, at that point, I, th I think there was an option to, uh, or an, an attempt to try and uh, send it upstream, but then OpenAbilia was uh, thinking a different way of doing things, and uh, well, we just had to uh, keep our own way with this one. Um, of course, we were running system, uh, services, network services on the private network, also on the public one. Within. So machines would get configured with DHCP. Um, that used to work at the time. Dynamic DNS was an option that we had to install because many users were coming with a, hey, can I book an IP from you for, for my VM so that I, um, I can make sure that I always get the same IP? Well, for licensing programs, um, some applications require a specific IP. Well, it, providing them a way for you to, do, to get a predictable DNS name or host name based on your VM name and your group 
used to solve that use case at the time. And then uh, our jewel, the wizard. Well, back then, there was no such thing as a marketplace. The only way that you could run VMs is to have an image, create a template, at least make sure that all of these things were properly defined and then you would be able to start your VM. We created a wizard with a couple of steps. You would click here, yes, very window style. And the fourth step is, are you sure that what you've clicked so far is actually what you want? Yes. You would get uh, to choose from four, um, four images at a time. And then you would get uh, even some resizing on your VM. You could choose uh, disk space. Yeah, it used to work. And all of these that used to work <laughs> are great advantages. But it also meant that we were locked. You'll see a bit more about storage. We also had an evol evolution on storage. We started with an NFS shared storage. And that didn't perform as much as we needed. And before we talking about performance, some users said, yeah, but I have this data and I have to bring it, but then I don't want my quota to tick. Oh, because yes, we have quotas. We are accounting, and that means we also want to make sure that we estimate what size of a project you are going to have in terms of core hours and in terms of storage. So yes, um, we came up with this option. It would be a shared storage pool that you could access via SFTP from the outside world and you, can, you could mount as an NFS mount point in your VMs and then you could have data there maybe to share among VMs or to upload your data or download your results from the outside world. That was also the way to upload and download images to the Open Nebula interface. It used to work fantastically. And there was also a place for, uh, story for you to store backups. You could write there in a specific directory, backups directory, whatever you would put there would be backed up every day. And it used to work until um, performance issues arised. Well, we realized that when our cloud would be at 100, sorry, at 60% of uh, CPU booking, <laughs> then the whole thing would be rather slow when it came to I.O. So we upgraded some of the nodes, we added more nodes, and we gave them SSD nodes. Now, it's local SSD, so you have a limited uh, storage, but it can become uh, fast. So for things like databases, it could be an option. Now, for databases, we've got people who have large databases, and the small SSD, uh, space on a local node would not be enough. Plus, you don't want to have very big images, as we've realized uh, through, uh, well, the hard way. If you are going to be running a VM with a large image that needs to be copied from somewhere to somewhere else, that's error prone, and that's calling for trouble. So we came up with uh, MySQL as a service as well, so you could get a, a space there. For large data, transfers from the outside to the, to, to, well, the cloud, in particular, HPC cloud in particular, but any other infrastructure from, the Netherlands, from, from our Netherlands uh, e-infrastructure, we come up with the data ingest service, which is basically scientists can come or send their disks and plug them physically and then we would copy stuff. They are not doing it themselves, of course. You don't have access to the data center, but this is necessary. Not everything can be automated in a in a reasonable way. And archive, some people uh, do the research, they produce the results, and they need to keep uh, all, well, sometimes the input as well, for repeatability purposes, and well, we have these services as well. Not necessarily through the HPC cloud, but from the HPC cloud to these archiving places. So, the service needs to evolve. And hey, we've become uh, masters of writing emails that end up with, we apologize for the inconvenience that this may have cost you so far. A couple of examples. Uh, I was uh, laughing the other day when I was compiling this uh, slide. I was laughing at how we were suffering when we were having to deal with these uh, items. And there are problems coming from everywhere. So this is a, a real service. Now, the data center can have problems. Now, in principle, you think your cluster is probably power redundant, that if one line fails, the other one will keep everything up. And well, as it turns out, it doesn't. Well, it helps also troubleshoot. We also have enthusiastic users. We have users who claim, yes, this is fast. Yes, this is faster than I'm used to. Can I get even faster? Well, yeah, it turns out you can. And then eventually you will monopolize. That was a very nice word. 
from my previous uh, colleague speaker. Uh, yes, and you even get, uh, because you can do lots of stuff, you can also make lots of connections, and then eventually you get banned from an FTP server. Um, another thing is, well, we're using Open Nebula, we were using Open Nebula, and Open Nebula is a piece of software, and it may have uh, bugs. Well, one bug that we had at some point is that well, all our images were deleted. Nothing, nothing, nothing traumatic for, for, for the OpenMD guys, well, it was for us. Uh, when we communicated with them, um, well, they told us, yes, yes, we had identified this, but yeah, uh, it, it was corrected already, we just needed to upgrade. Uh, VNC ports, yes, uh, we have had, well, last year, well, last time I checked, we had had over 42,000 VMs uh, who had ever run. We, and everyone was taking a VNC port. Well, up to the amount of uh, available ones, you realized, well, how can we fix this? It's not a big deal. And we also were locked into uh, our, the current setup at the time. Because of all the tweaks that we had to do, this is the other option here, um, we couldn't really upgrade anymore. We, went, we stayed until last year with 3.2. Uh, we had kernel panics because of uh, the libvirt and QM ver versions and the patches we had. It was solving these things uh, is a bit of a problem. So yes, you also get to learn more about uh, Open Nebula. Well, you just find a, a file where there is a number, which is an offset, which, well, if you just delete, well, or subtract 100 from it, it just starts working again. And this is the present. Finally, we can upgrade. Well, what we did is just install everything from scratch, of course. Uh, what we have learned is we don't want to tweak things that much anymore. We want to uh, move forward. And 4.12 was the first one uh, that was going to uh, consider accounting. We are looking into their accounting, and it's providing lots of stuff that we can use. So at this point, I'm sure I can get more than enough than, I, uh, than what I need. Not necessarily about the user interface uh, for the accounting, which I've heard has also been rethought uh, uh, for 4.14. Another important part is, well, everybody's putting GPUs everywhere so that people can uh, compute with GPUs. Well, yes, uh, we have that. Now, Open Nebula didn't support that. Uh, luckily enough, you can just come to them, talk to them. They're a bunch of friendly people. And uh, they have a fun the feature program. So we made use of that, and they kindly implemented GPU support for us. Now that works. More things with uh, having software is, well, we cannot upgrade yet. Because even though we want that feature very much, we are now using the app market, which is there. You see, it's not the app market that you're probably used to with the trolley. It's, uh, well, that one. I don't know whether we customize the icon or whether. Uh, it's their plugin. They also have a plugin for your, so that you can run your own app market, and that's what we want to do because we want to encourage communities of users within our HPC cloud. Yes, uh, the plugin doesn't work in 4.14 apparently, just because they have redesigned the user interface. It's fine. We will work. We will wait until the next version. We're lo re eagerly looking forward to that. Um, so OpenAI brings lots of good stuff. The admin. Uh, facility of uh, groups now also releases us from having to do all, uh, user administration ourselves. It's, it's nice. The user can actually get uh, Sandstone, and they will be able to work with it, even though they require a bit of help from documentation that you specifically have to write for them, or, um, well, even at some points, face-to-face -face sessions. But it's fine. It also helps with, the, with building this community feeling that I'm, I was telling you about that we really are looking forward to. Now, of course, we have Ceph. Uh, it's hype, it's new, it works, it's fantastic. Uh, non, it, not, it doesn't, we didn't really want it because it would help with uh, having better I.O. or better throughput, but it helped when we saw that NFS wouldn't really scale any further. Ceph <coughs> promises to deliver scalability as much as you need. So far, we have 50 nodes, 50 OSD nodes, and we are already at 20%. We released our cloud in June. We migrated everything that wasn't running, that needed to be migrated, we finished in October, and we are already at 20%, I heard yesterday. Amazing. Really cool. Um, I'm very, very happy with it. Uh, like, some, like my uh, colleague, previous colleague speaker said, 
yeah, so if things can go wrong because you configure something wrong or because something just goes there, and you don't even notice because the VMs are not really there. And GPU processing, as I said. Users are very happy, and I think I can uh, leave it here. Uh, they are using, they're, all of these projects were running on the cloud, these fields, and they really love big VMs, elasticity, and they are providing services to their own customers. As an appendix, this is where we are. You can get it in the PDF, and this is what we have uh, in terms of network. Nothing uh, remarkable except for this wonderful Arista switch that we have, one-to-one -one, uh, connection. And that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>